Hello and welcome back to She Walks, She Paints. Thank you so much for joining me again. And if you have been liking, commenting or subscribing to my other videos, thank you so much for doing that. I really do appreciate it. If you are new here, my name is Sarah and I will be taking you on a walk today in the beautiful country of Scotland, looking for things to photograph while I'm out and going home to my studio to try and paint something that I found in watercolour. You'll get to see that painting process in full at the end of this video. Today we've come back to beautiful Pearshire. I can't stay away at this time of year because it's just the most beautiful place. We're still catching the tail end of autumn, the leaves are coming down. I think there's actually more on the ground at the moment than there are in the trees, but I think it's still going to be really, really beautiful to get all those autumnal colours. So we're going to go for a walk starting in Pitlochry, which is a beautiful little village, and we're going to walk around Loch Fascali. So I'm hoping for some really lovely views over the water and the trees surrounding it as well. So let's head out, see what we can find today. Lochry is a mostly Victorian town at the heart of Perthshire. It developed into a tourist resort after Queen Victoria and Prince Albert visited the area in 1842. We had a busy day the day before, filming for my partner Willie's channel, so we decided to have a relaxing start today and stop for breakfast in Pitlochry before starting our walk. I always buy from local cafes whenever I visit a place, and any Kofi donations that I get from this channel will go directly to supporting small independent businesses like this. Hey Jack. Wait. Wait. Okay. Good boy.
This miniature suspension bridge was opened in 1913, replacing the Portna Craig Ferry, which had crossed the river since the 12th century. The rushing water below and the slight bounce makes walking on this bridge a strange feeling, like I was moving sideways, not forwards. What are you looking at? You looking for fish? The bridge cost £850, which equates to over £115,000 in today's money. This series of artificial pools is one of Pitlochry's most famous attractions. It's a fish ladder, built to allow the annual migration of Atlantic salmon and sea trout to their breeding grounds past the dam. It has a total of 34 chambers, each one slightly higher than the last, and small entrances which allow the fish to pass through. The turbines of the dam are also fish friendly, allowing the newly hatched fish to pass through safely. It's a refreshing change to see power being generated with so much consideration for the natural resources around us. Pitlochry Dam and Power Station started generating electricity in 1950. It was part of an ambitious scheme by the Hydro Board to construct hydroelectric power stations across the highlands of Scotland, making the most of the high mountains, the lochs and rivers, and the plentiful rainfall. Every year the two turbines in this dam meet the energy needs of around 15,000 homes, and the same water will generate power five times as it makes its way down the River Tummel. <laughs> You'll have to look for me. The team of labourers became known as the Tunnel Tigers. Over a decade of backbreaking work, they helped to build a total of 54 power stations, 78 dams, and 300 kilometres of tunnels. The Tunnel Tigers made history in this area in 1955. They worked seven long, exhausting days to tunnel through 170 metres of hard rock, a world record that has never been beaten. Trees starting to look so bare now. Still so gorgeous out here, although the trees are getting very bare. It's starting to look a lot more winter-like. That period of autumn with the leaves is just so short, so you've got to get out there while you can. Still beautiful, still gorgeous. There was a storm a few days ago that had really high winds, so I think all the leaves got sort of shook off then. 
which is it's quite sad but that's the way of the season i feel like i always talk about the weather it's very british um every single video <laughs> sorry about that the water we got an amazing view of Ben Veraki, the mountain that sits above the village of Pitlochwi. We climbed this mountain back in February when the frozen landscape was covered in snow, a very different view from today. Loch Fascali might look like it has always sat naturally within the landscape, but it was actually created when the river was dammed. There are many man-made lochs like this in Scotland, and while they do look beautiful, they come at a sacrifice of land, and occasionally settlements. Loch Fascali did not impact any housing, but it did flood the old Highland Games playing field. Wait. Good boy. Good boy. I'm gonna put you on your lead. Good boy.
was so surprised to see this clump of heather still growing so late in autumn. The flowers look so beautiful catching the late evening light with the view of the loch behind them. What a gorgeous view. So we just crossed over that bridge over the loch, um, Loch Vascali, um, just underneath the A9. The A9 is the main road from the south up to the highlands. So it's the road we always take to go on adventures, essentially. We've crossed that bridge by car loads of times, but I never knew there was a little footbridge just beneath it. That was a cool thing to discover. Just such a beautiful cold autumn day. Love it. Love this kind of weather. There I am talking about weather again. I must stop myself from talking about the weather all the time. We're a bit obsessed with it in the UK. Anyway, we're going to head back down to the village of Pitlochry now. I think we're going to be mostly on a small road, but I will show you the walk if there's anything interesting. Let's keep going and see what else we can find. <laughs> I love autumn days like this, when you can smell the damp leaves that have collected on the ground. It makes me want to cosy up against the colder weather, which is exactly what we did after this walk. Hey buddy. Ah! Okay, I can see that wee bridge that we came across at the start now, so we're nearly back where we started and finished this walk. I was gonna say it's been so lovely and peaceful, but actually, I don't know if you can hear it. There's like some really loud music going on somewhere. Someone's having a party, <laughs> but hey, it's Friday. They can have a party if they want. <laughs> I really loved this walk. It's been so lovely. Most of it's been really peaceful, aside from the loud music. I um, love crossing that little suspension bridge and the dam was really cool. Just so powerful when all that water was coming out. It's got a little bit chilly now because the sun's just gone down behind the hills. So we're heading back into the village. I might take my drone pilot to the pub nearby because there's a pub and microbrewery near to Pitlochry. So I might take him there and get him a pint. He's done his work for the day. He's done lots of amazing drone shots. So we'll probably do that and then we're gonna head home. I hope you enjoyed that walk coming along with this and seeing probably the last of the proper autumn leaves. I think after this, it'll start getting all wintry. 
um, but then we'll get some we'll get some other beautiful things to look at and photograph I'm sure we're gonna head back now and I will probably see you in the studio to start painting and have a look at my photos so I will see you back in the studio to start painting see you then I think they're playing Queen that's a good choice at least they're playing good music I just want to say thanks to everyone who has been supporting me by buying things from my Etsy store. I do really appreciate it and it's really helping me out a lot. So yep, yeah, if you have been buying any prints, they've been on sale the last couple of weeks and I think I might extend that for another week just because it's that time of year. I, it's after Halloween now so I can say the C word, Christmas. So if you do want to buy anyone a print for Christmas or a calendar, I think there's a couple of those left if you're quick. And also the beanie hats. So I've put them on my Etsy store, hand knitted by my partner Willie's Auntie Sands and we're splitting the money that we make from, from those beanie Thank you to those of you who have bought one already. I really do appreciate it and I hope you like them. There's only very limited stock of the beanies because obviously they're hand knitted and we don't want to put too much pressure on Auntie Sands. So if you do want one of those, I'd get in there quick. Every sale from my Etsy store really helps support this channel and helps me keep doing what I love and sharing that with you as well here on YouTube. If you go on my Etsy store, the link is in the video description below. I will put some postage dates on the Etsy store just to tell you when the last postage is for Christmas to try and get there in time. So yeah, thank you so much for doing that and I hope everyone really likes what they buy. There's nothing quite like sitting cosily in a pub with a real fire after a day outdoors in the cold. The pale tones that I put in at the start seem like they stand out from the page a lot, but once I start adding in darker tones, they will fade to almost white. This wash will be the lightest part of the painting. After the complexity of the autumn leaf that I painted last week, I wanted to do something a bit more simple this week, which is why I decided to paint the sprigs of heather. There is still a challenge to be had in capturing all the tiny details of such a simple composition. I also wanted to be able to finish my painting quite quickly, as I am going away next weekend to meet up with some of my old course mates from university. For those of you who have been wondering, I did study art. I did a BA in fine art painting at Manchester Metropolitan University. However, my work there consisted mainly of large-scale oil paintings, and I have never been taught watercolour formally. Every week I'm learning more about this medium and how to achieve the effects that I want to capture.
type of heather is sometimes known as ling heather. The flowers are smaller and more delicate than the bell heather that I painted in a previous video. They give Scotland its beautiful dusky purple hillsides over summer and early autumn. This is also the variety that you can sometimes find in white, which is the lucky heather of Scottish folklore. I am still waiting to find some lucky white heather on my walks. I made this composition from two different photographs, so I had to make sure that the light was hitting both pieces in the same direction when painting them. I'm using two different shades of purple to achieve the right effect. One is a warm pink shade for the tops of the flowers where the sunlight was hitting them. The other was a cooler blue toned purple for the undersides which weren't getting direct light. I usually do at least three or four layers on a painting to achieve the right depth of colour and also to gradually add in more shadows each time. The last stage is adding the deepest shadows to contrast with the lightest tones and make the subject matter pop. All my paintings are available as prints on my Etsy store. Purchasing a print means that you're helping to support my channel and genuinely helps me keep doing what I love and sharing that with you. You can also support me by liking, commenting or subscribing, following me on Instagram or by donating the cost of a coffee over on Ko-fi. Links to all my pages are in the video description below. this one walking. Backwards. Back it up, back it up. She poops. Oh. She picks up. Uh, does she? Oh, I'm adding armor. Of course I am. Of course I am. <gasps> Buying prints which are on sale at the moment or I think they're still on sale.
Jack attack. He's not even sorry. How does he know? Right, wait. Oh, man. Right, let's get out of here before any more mushrooms get massacred.